in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen heavenly father we thank you and we praise you for this beautiful day lord for this gift of time that you have given us we thank you lord for every person gathered here who has come to receive from you lord holy spirit i really don't know what to teach help me holy spirit because your word says in 2 corinthians 12 verse 9 your grace is sufficient for me holy spirit take complete authority of this entire session take complete authority of my mind and my vocal cords you think through my mind you speak through my mouth let every word that is spoken over here pierce the hearts of those who are listening and i bind every spirit of distraction disturbance and unbelief that has come to steal kill and destroy in the name of jesus i command you leave this place right now thank you holy spirit for i know and i know that you are going to confirm every word spoken over here with accompanying signs wonders and testimonies we make this prayer in jesus name amen 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 praise amen this okay so today as we were praying in tongues okay one of the benefits or one of the points while praying in tongues says the spirit intercedes for us he helps us in our weakness okay so while i was praying in tongues i was meditating on romans 8 26 i think yeah it says the spirit helps us in our weakness because do you know the revelation that i have gotten as i sit in the presence of god is how far have i gone from the lord by that what i mean to say is there was a time in my life okay where i did not know you know how to preach i did not know you know what to preach and i was so dependent on the lord that is what 1 samuel 15 verse 7 says let's go to that scripture thank you holy spirit yeah can someone please read this samuel said when you were small in your own sight were you not made the head of the tribes of israel and the lord anointed you king over israel thank you jesus okay thank you jesus samuel was saying to saul okay this was a time where saul had become the king of israel okay and at that point pride took over and he started depending on his on himself rather than depending on the instructions of god and that's when samuel said to saul when you were small in your own sight were you not made the head of the tribes of israel and the lord anointed you king over israel that means when saul was selected as the king when he was anointed and chosen to be a king okay he was in search of his father's donkeys and the day of his ceremony the crowning ceremony he was hiding okay that's exactly how he was weak and that's when the lord appointed him as the king of israel that same verse speaks to me today there was a time where i did not know what to preach i would not go 
bioformula. I would not go by any teachings. All I had was just my testimony. Whatever the Lord had done. I used to speak out of relationship. But as time passed by, as I was studying the scriptures, you know, as I started preaching on different platforms, I did not even realize, okay, where I had come to a place of complacency. Now, when I say complacency, I had come to a place where I started depending on whatever I had learned. And, you know, I was preaching that only, okay? And honestly, that's a very dangerous place to be. That's a very dangerous time in a Christian's life when he depends on his own knowledge rather than depending on the Lord. Because as you grow in the knowledge of the word, as you, you know, see signs, wonders, as you, your ministry starts growing, there doesn't take much time for the focus to shift from doing things for the Lord. I mean, from doing things with the Lord to doing things for the Lord. And that's where I said to Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I am preaching. I'm preaching the word. Okay. I'm sharing the word. But when I'm sharing the word, I don't feel that connected with you. I don't feel that fire, that passion that I had for you. Yes, on the outside, it looks like everything looks so good. Everything looks like, okay, wow. You know, you're going and preaching in different places. You're doing so much. The schedule is filled with so many, you know, preachings, teachings, ministering. But in all of that, there is one question I have to ask myself. Am I really connected with Jesus while I'm doing that? Am I really dependent on the Holy Spirit? Or am I going on my own thinking? How do you know when a person is really connected to the Holy Spirit versus a person who is preaching on his own ability, depending on his own performance? The answer is a person who depends on the Holy Spirit will produce the fruit of the Holy Spirit. A person who depends on the Holy Spirit will never ever take credit for anything that he does because he knows that it is nothing of him. He knows that whatever he's preaching or she's preaching is not his own or her own, but rather it is coming from the Holy Spirit. Like right now, today I'm in that place where I said, Lord, I don't want to go prepared for this class. I don't want to go with a topic. You know, I'm going to prepare this and I'm going to preach on this topic. I'm going to preach on that topic. I want none of this. I'm just going to come here and I'm going to let you take control. Let the topic also come from you, Lord. Let it be that I'm preaching out of relationship. Let it not be that I'm preaching out of performance. And that's where, you know, Holy Spirit helps me. Because James 4 verse 6 says, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. He gives more grace to the humble. What is the meaning of the word grace? Can anyone tell me? We do not deserve for what we are, but uh, we have received it. God's unmerited God's favor. It's unmerited. Absolutely right. Grace is God's willingness to use his power, his ability on my behalf, even though I don't deserve it. I don't deserve for the things I have done. I really don't deserve. But still, he gives me. And the scripture says, 
in James chapter 4 verse 6 he gives more grace to the humble that means humility is or to be humble is when i am in a position where i am able to tap into that grace i don't have to try to be humble okay i don't have to try to put my place of humility humility simply means the definition of humility is god centered god dependent god focused in everything that i do am i connected to jesus if i'm really connected to jesus then will, the, you know i will not just speak the word when it comes to this zoom class but i will also speak the word the word will be consciously on my mind when i'm doing everything i will be so sensitive to the word of god in the little things that i do you know there was a time in my life where you know i was so in love with jesus this when i'm i'm talking about is the time i was born again okay and i was so much in fire for the lord i did not uh, you know no many scriptures i did not i was not preaching at that point but i was so in love with jesus you know the the relationship that i had with jesus was real because i just wanted to hear the teachings i wanted to feed my spirit with the word of god day and night okay and even in the little breaks that i would get you know the thoughts would be constantly on what i just heard okay and while those thoughts are going around then suddenly holy spirit would tell me to do something and i would be extremely sensitive to his voice where you know i don't want anything else to come in between me and god that was exactly what my relationship was with the lord but as time started passing by i didn't realize where you know suddenly that love that i had for the lord started becoming cold in the sense on the outside it looks like okay you know i know scriptures i'm growing in the knowledge i'm ministering i'm doing these things but inside do i really have the passion for the lord am i coming every day am i looking forward to each day where i want to grow i want to grow more and more am i coming to this place am i putting myself in a situation in a place where i say lord i need you even if i'm preaching i need you while i'm preaching i don't want to preach based on some head knowledge based on what i heard in a teaching i want to preach what you want me to preach i want to preach what i have experienced and that's exactly where whenever i put myself in that situation i see that his grace is sufficient for me let's go to that scripture 2 corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 okay yes can someone please read this but he said to me my grace my favor and loving kindness and mercy is enough for you sufficient against any danger and enables you to bear the trouble manfully for my strength and power are made perfect fulfilled and completed and show themselves most effective in your weakness therefore i will all the more gladly glory in my weaknesses and infirmities that the strength and power of christ the messiah may rest yes may pitch a tent over and dwell upon me praise yes. god so and he said that is the lord said to paul my grace my favor loving kindness and mercy is enough for you 
when do we depend on the lord in our weakness or when everything is good in our weakness we depend on him in our weakness but that's not the way god designed us from the time of creation he designed us to depend on him okay the instruction also that he gave adam and eve to not eat from that tree of knowledge of good and evil okay was out of love so that they could be dependent on him because that tree was giving them the knowledge of good and evil and once they would eat of that the fruit of that tree they would know the difference between good and evil and they would no longer be dependent on god god knew that that's why he did not want them to eat of that tree that's the same thing he doesn't want us to go by our own thinking he doesn't want us wants us to go by our own you know wisdom because our wisdom is so limited the holy spirit as i was telling y'all in the previous class speaks to us in a small still voice and if you are constantly having thoughts you know you are having your own agendas your own motives you can very easily miss that small still voice that speaks to us constantly why i'm sharing this is because i have experienced this and that's where i said lord it is time for me that i get back to studying the word i get back to that place where i started not knowing anything depending completely on you making my relationship the priority in my life not making any other thing the first thing in my life while it is good that you know you are doing things for the lord god doesn't want you to do it on your own strength because if you go by your own strength you're going to get burnt out yes in the beginning you're going to see the result you're going to see okay everything looks good but in the long run you will experience burnt out be i mean feeling burnt out being stressed you know going on your performance you will be doing things without realizing that you know you have gone far away from the lord on the outside it looks good but on the inside you are empty always remember this okay god is not interested in your and mine action he is only interested in our heart condition he wants our heart he wants us to be connected to him he doesn't want us to you know be separated from him it is we because of our own thinking it is we who walk away from him it is we who get drifted away because we are not able to discern we are not able to realize what looks like okay i am connected with the lord that is what i used to think i am doing this thing i am taking the bible study i am connected with the lord but that's where the holy spirit corrected me and said no that's not what it means to be connected with the lord just because you are preaching the word just because you are doing things okay people might recognize you okay this person is so anointed this person is preaching this way and that way but it doesn't mean that you are connected to the lord you can be still very far away and that's why spending time in the presence of the lord is so important where you talk to him where you tell him lord these are the areas in my life where i am weak and i don't know what to go up how to go about it i need your wisdom in this area and that's where his grace really shows up his power really becomes manifest when i humble myself and come to that place where i say lord guide me i don't want to go by my own thinking 
because the tendency is from childhood we are raised up such in such a way that constantly it is about performance from childhood whether you see it is in education it is you know it is all about performance like i can recall my days of childhood it was all about you know performance because when you perform well you're given a reward the world acknowledges you people acknowledge you based on the talents and gifts that you have oh wow you sing so well oh wow you perform so well but in all this i am not giving the lord a chance to depend on to jesus i am not giving a chance for myself to depend on the lord and what i have what i can do in my strength is very very limited but when i depend on him and i say lord in this area of my life i need you whether it is cooking whether it is doing things you know as i'm speaking to you all holy spirit is reminding me like i couple of months back i did not know how to cook okay and i i used to think cooking is something very difficult something not my thing okay so i remember the first time i was trying to cook a dish okay i just prayed and i said holy spirit this is the first time i'm cooking okay i don't know anything but i know you're going to help me in this because i don't want you know it is to be an experiment or something where you know the food gets spoiled i don't want any of those things i want you to help me and as i made that that's when i saw that the food was really good and it was only because i made a decision to be dependent on the holy spirit so that's the relationship god wants from us in the little things that we do am i sensitive to him it can be cooking it can be anything it can be anything and that only happens when i'm connected to him when i'm constantly talking to him i'm constantly listening to him speak to me the lord has his own ways how he speaks to us he does not speak only in one way sometimes he'll speak to you directly through his word sometimes he'll speak to you through a teaching sometimes he'll speak to you through a person through things around you to anything around you and that's where i understand okay his grace is sufficient for me in any situation and when a person understands grace the real meaning of grace he will not you know boast that's the first thing he will never compare himself to others okay the third thing that happens is he will not you know be worried the outcome for example you know uh, i'll give a very nice example so that you all can relate uh, when i was you know small and we had this liturgy where i would go on the stage and read the first reading or any of the thing okay the focus was not on what i'm reading i was reading the word of god but the focus was not there the focus was you know how will people think about me what will they think about me whether i performed well or not that was the focus and today i say lord you know how wrong i was to be so focused on that performance that how clearly i have read how i have walked i have walked from this part or i walked that's from that side i you know bowed well in front of the altar i realize god is not interested in all those things he is interested in if i am really connected with him and that's why when i understand his grace even if i fail even if i fall even if i make a mistake i will not get into condemnation i will not be upset neither will i get offended because i know that my god loves me my god doesn't expect anything from me he loved me even when i was a sinner that's what romans 5:8 says 
Christ died for me while I was a sinner. So what makes you think, that's what the Holy Spirit asked me, what makes you think that now God is going to see that your performance and going to love you? He loved you when you were not even connected to him. When you did not even know Jesus, that is the time he died for you. Because many people believe that once I am saved, okay, now God expects me to perform. That is a very wrong thinking. Okay, now that I've saved, I understand grace. If I truly understand grace, I will never go back to my old life. I will never go back to those things. Because a person whose foundation is based on two things, God's love and grace, that person will never get attracted to anything that the devil throws at you. Any temptation, whether it is the pleasure of the world or any kind of thing in any form, the devil has his strategies. He comes through guilt. He comes through condemnation. He comes through people. He has his ways. But when I understand that I am what I am because of the grace of God, then nothing will bother me. Even if I fail, even if I fall, I know that I'm still loved by God. I, my performance, the mistake that I made, okay, God doesn't remember it. He just wants me to be connected to him. I was very, very curious, okay, about when I would see different men and women of God walking in that anointing. And I would say, Lord, what they have, even I want it. So the Lord told me, that the reason, you know, you feel the anointing, the anointing in their ministry on their lives is so strong is because of one thing. Because when they walk on the pulpit, okay, they are conscious of one thing, that without me, they are nothing. And I have realized that, that I have to be conscious. I have to be conscious of the Lord. I have to deliberately remind myself that without the Lord, I am nothing. Without the Lord, I cannot. And that's where I understand. I feel the love of God. I, feel, I experience His grace. You know, when I am conscious of Him. Thank you, Jesus. Because I thought I should share all these things is because... It, if it has happened to me, it can happen to any person. And that's why we have to be so vigilant. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Would anyone like to add something? Uh, yeah, uh, Priya, can I beautifully? Uh, I'll just take two minutes. It's okay? Yes, yes. Go ahead, Uncle. Brilliant. Actually, uh, very well said. You know, point number one is that. Uh, I mean, uh, even in my life, uh, uh, I, I mean, I've been going to church. I've been knowing, knowing the word of God. I've been uh, know, doing all the things right up to uh, uh, the age of 60. Okay. Uh, and uh, it's, it's not that, I mean, it's like being lukewarm. This is what I would put it. I was, I was a lukewarm uh, Catholic. And uh, there's a difference between being lukewarm and uh, hot, you know. Uh, so... Even in the Bible, uh, uh, I, I, I don't know where it quotes, but it says, if you're lukewarm, I will spit you out from, uh, from uh, uh, I will spit you out. And uh, basically what uh, uh, what is required is, I think we got to be hot. You know, hot is in the sense, uh, I, I, I think each one of us I'm knows. Fire. Uh, fire yeah, fire, fire burning. You know, you, like even if you see the apostles, you know, they were, most of them were, I mean, an example uh, of apostles where, you know, they were all, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, very, uh, after they received the Holy Spirit, they were like, you know, they could do anything, uh, do anything uh, which which could be impossible. I, I just make it quick because this little one is becoming a little bit, <laughs> okay, now uh, what I wanted to share was, uh, in another one minute was, absolutely, uh, the message which you conveyed, you know, the, the relationship should be it should be 
you know, you uh, I cannot ride on two boards. For example, myself, I'm talking of myself. I was connected with so many groups, and you know, I was trying to be diplomatic with those groups because they used to uh, crack little, uh, uh, you know, it was not bad jokes, but a little bit smutty jokes, and which is also not uh, 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 required. You know, I mean, it is not allowed. I would say that is how the evil one. Then they uh, formed the smutty joke. They would send a little bit of. Uh, uh, what do you call it? You know, uh, not very good pictures. You know, and you know, like, and then I was ridiculed. You know, in the group, I would say, "Come on, you called, you're behaving like a saint or something." What I did was, I said, uh, "I'm sorry, I, I don't belong to this group," and I exited the group. You know, my old classmates group, which was almost 150 of them. My uh, so then I told them before I uh, uh, exited, I said, "I am available 101." You won't believe. The, the real true ones, you know, today morning I got a message from one of my uh, very close friends. They said, uh, absolutely, Rupert, you cannot ride on two horses. You have to put your leg on you know, one boat. Or... So this is exactly what I, I, I wanted to convey. And also another message about, you know, why people who do bad always, you know, I mean, they have a good, uh, they, uh, nothing, you know. It's, it's, it's not that uh, we feel that nothing is happening. Uh, mm -hmm. I think a lovely scripture Mama sent it to me today, Matthew 40, Matthew 13, 40, 41. Okay, which I wanted to share. I said, if uh, Priya's class comes, I will share the scripture and it is so well connected with your this thing. Matthew 13, 41 says very clearly that uh, uh, the Lord will send his angels to, you know, uh, to discard evil. Okay, to discard evil. And uh, I was again connected with another scripture, which I was always, you know, I, I, which was my question. Why do bad people always, you know, uh, which, uh, which is not true. Uh, Matthew 13, 26, which says, you know, about the weeds, you know, uh, because if he plucks out, if he plucks out the weeds, uh, uh, even the good weeds will be, uh, you know, so that's why at the end of time, he will segregate the good and the bad. I'm done. I'm done with two minutes, Priya. Uh, carry on, darling. Carry on. Okay. Please go. Thank you, Jesus. See, our relationship with the Lord is what, you know, makes us say no to the things before. No matter what friends you had in the past, now as you start studying the word of God, you realize that, okay, uh, now my life is connected in Christ. And because what I have with Jesus is so precious, that is exactly what makes me want to say no to the ungodly things. It is not that because we, we should you know, uh, disconnect from people or anything. It is only that we should not fellowship with the wrong association because that can affect my passion for the Lord. And that's what uncle shared very beautifully. Praise God. Thank Many you. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Um, that uh, the scripture he wanted is Revelation 3.16. I'll spew you out of my mouth if you're either warm, lukewarm, when you're lukewarm. Revelation 3.16. You know, um, I, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Thank uh, you, sister. Very, uh, when we were children, like uh, when we received first study communion, you know, that same passion I had, and for Jesus and only Jesus and and collecting all the holy picture. Even till now, I have got the holy picture of when I was childhood, you know. I can't discard it. I just don't want to do it. Let anyone do whatever later. <clears throat> but as we grew up, you know, coming into the world and our parents were so protective, didn't allow us to, you know, we didn't uh, see what uh, wicked world it was. It was always with our family and going to church and, and lovely things happening in my life. Only when um, we grew and going to college and then after the workplace there where I, you know, went astray I could say, that's the word I would use went astray, but then, you know God in his mercy and grace as you say, brought me back and now I know, uh, after I retired, nothing to do right, so I came to listening to preaching, teaching and all and I got rooted in the word and now that uh, helping me in my walk of life and more importantly what I would like to say is this morning that what I what you share with us is so beautiful because it's building us day by day, even being so adult. Like yesterday, my grandchildren wishing me, and you know, I said, What would you like to say about Abo? What you like to say? You know, I was really chill and emotional love because what they say, Abo, 
you told her to say Jesus loves us, which my parents would not say it was, or we never heard it earlier. So, so, and you know, they say that I have a mind of Christ, wisdom of God. And I said, exactly, that's how you excel because the marks were full, like 40 and 40 and whatever. I said, that's exactly how God will help you. Call on Jesus and he will help you. You know, I, I feel so thrilled that, you know, we are changing now at this age and we can change our generation. Praise God. Thank you for your teachings every day. God bless you, Priya. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Yes, Holy Spirit teaching us. Praise God. Uh, Priya, one more thing uh, I just wanted to share as sister was saying. Thank you to your sister for that lovely scripture, Revelation 3.16. Amazing. Uh, uh, today morning, another thing which uh, occurred to me, you know, about, uh, you know, it's, it's very difficult for us to forgive even our enemies. Because imagine somebody, when they say the word enemy, is somebody who has really done bad to you. Now, you know, I mean, this was my big question. Uh, how to forgive and uh, this was revealed to me today uh with so with such a ease i'm going to share it with my children and also with you know my dear ones my my family members listen to this very carefully you know because this is exactly how it works you know the uh, uh like uh, priya has very uh, confidently very professionally you know like we we hear so many so many things like this you know you uh, forgive your uh, i'll quote the scripture luke 23 34 says uh, father forgive them for they know not what they do but to connect it with how we receive forgiveness okay so um, uh, it's like this in in a, in a very uh, simple nutshell is that whatever the teaching when we forgive we receive forgiveness this is a uh, absolutely truth okay the second is do not judge okay uh, uncle, uncle, uncle one minute you said when we forgive we receive forgiveness right yes, i want to course. clarify that I want to clear that out. See, that was when Jesus said that, okay, uh, it is in Mark 11, uh, this thing, okay? I want to clarify that because, good, you mentioned it because that's a big, uh, you know, it will yeah, change. It's, it's, yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a very big, uh, what do you call it? So many uh, doubts, you know, we have to connect with this. Please, please. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. it's so beautiful. Go ahead. So, yeah, yeah. Good scripture, Mark 11, verse 25 says, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him and let it drop. Leave it, let it go. In oh. order that your father who is in heaven may also forgive you, you your own failings and shortcomings and let them drop. And that is what you said. Exactly. But you exactly. have to remember, okay, we have to remember one thing. When Jesus said this, this is Jesus' words, okay, to his disciples. When he said this, they were still in the old covenant. That means Jesus had still not died on the cross. They were still under law. And the thing is, the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant is, the old covenant demanded you to perform. And that's why in the scripture it says, you first forgive and then you will receive the forgiveness. But, yeah. but now we have to understand we are not in this covenant. Okay. Yeah. We are in the new covenant. And the new covenant says that Jesus first died on the cross. And he, as you said, the last words when, you know, he died on the cross was, Father, forgive them for yeah. they know not no, what not they are doing. So yes, Jesus exactly. first forgave us. And that's why when I understand that after the cross, okay, after Jesus died on the cross, it is not my performance. But the first thing I have to understand is when Jesus died on the cross, there was a divine exchange. He was made sin so that I could receive the forgiveness. He took yes. the punishment. And now because I have received the forgiveness, now I'm able to forgive others with the same love and forgiveness that I received from Jesus. It is not okay. my forgiveness. It is not my love. It is his love. Because if you see today also, if I have to forgive anybody on my own strength, I would say it is impossible. But now when I understand that I am loved by the Lord, how much I have been forgiven, how much he has been merciful to me, 
the times i kept on repeating the same sins again and again same mistakes again and again he is still merciful to me he has still forgiven me he has washed me of my sins and when i understand that that is he forgave me of 10000 talents and i have to forgive only 100 shillings then it doesn't become difficult you know why we get confused is we think because i it is written i have to forgive and then i will be forgiven otherwise i will go to hell but that understanding is wrong that was in the old covenant now in the new covenant because i am forgiven because i am loved i am able to love with the same I, love can i uh, express a, a doubt over here priya yes, uh, yes, very yes. well said very well said i mean the lord forgives us uh, a thousand times but that uh, unless we clean our slates you know you know what i mean unless we clean uh, our slates obviously there is a block and we we don't deceive those uh, you know the uh, so again it is it is connected it is yeah the lord is always there to forgive us but if we are holding even a small thing so uh, what i what i realized today morning was uh, like it's it's like we do our part for by forgiving and leave the rest to the lord like the again that comes do not judge so uh, yeah. coming again to the uh, what do you call it um, uh, like my my life i'm talking about my own life like for every sin for every sin we undergo a little bit of you know penance or we undergo a little bit of you know uh, uh, whatever you call it you know uh, uh, this thing tribulation in our lives or whatever so uh, once we uh, once we are done with that we we are clear we are clean we do not worry about what the others are doing to us but from yes. our side we clean our uh, we clean this is i think this is a little bit tricky uh, no, and uh, i oh. think each one will be able to understand their own uh, experiences uh, uh, okay. you know uh, how it goes uh, uh, yeah uh, uncle i want to clear one thing i made you yeah. understand the difference between the old government and the new very government well. very well yeah. very well so very once well once and for all once and for all jesus has paid the price of sin he yes. has forgiven for everybody us. for, for okay. everybody it is for everybody But yeah when i say that i am not able to forgive the other person is it is because i have not tapped into that grace because ephesians 2:8 says for yes. by grace you have been saved yes. through not faith. by your own yeah, yeah. not yeah. by my own works so my faith is a response to what god has already done he has forgiven me that forgiveness is in my spirit but for me to access that i have to use faith because exactly. it is faith that pleases god the only way i can forgive somebody is by understanding how much i have been forgiven by faith through the scriptures through the praise written god. word praise, praise god. god and praise when you spoke about sin okay it is not penance rather sin has consequences okay we god has given us a choice to choose between life and death but we have we cannot choose the consequences of the decisions we make and that's why what you said okay the tribulation is the consequence of the wrong action that we said so i just wanted to clarify these things very well very well very well, very well. actually yeah, as you rightly said i mean um uh, what i what i really came to know today today and uh, not even you know like my part i think and and the rest leave it to the lord you know to to do his judgment uh, part of it. so from uh, uh, simple words from my side i don't do anything wrong i don't do anything uh, uh, i don't arm anybody yeah i just do my part and leave the rest to the lord leave the rest to the lord i mean uh, in in terms of my life you know whatever uh day to day activities you know we tend to you know uh, this thing so we, we do not harm anybody we do not uh, uh, wrong anybody and in other know, words we are led by the holy spirit yes. when amen. we are amen yes. i have something yes dr masela this one line i want to just say i understand that jesus has forgiven us of all our sins of he doesn't remember us and he washed us by his blood and even our future sins are washed made clean white as snow just that i want to say praise god thank you jesus
Okay, so that was a good question raised because you know that will help so many people understand the difference. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, say something. Is it okay? Yes, yes like, I, I always think uh, about you know like uh, my mom before she she knew she was going uh, you know because she was suffering with cancer. So she used to read the Word of God daily in her own private. Uh, personal time you know and uh, even though uh, the neighbors were not coming to visit or anything she went before you know it was God leading her to go and say sorry to the neighbors even though she hadn't done anything to them but she felt you know that before she meets the Lord she has to go and ask for forgiveness and that was a very uh, beautiful gesture in her and uh, you know uh, it could only be through the word of God that she was led. Because earlier, I, I don't think it would be possible for anyone and, and even her to go and say sorry. Because the, the lady, when I came back, told me, she says, your mother hadn't done anything wrong to her. But she came and she said, sorry. But that was what I felt that she wanted to be clean in the eyes of God, you know, when she faces her creator. So that's what I wanted to share. Even with her family, she went and said sorry to everyone, wherever they were, like, you know, made it before her death. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God for her. That is what the Holy Spirit does. He convicts us in our spirit to yes. do the right things. Praise Praise God. God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. So we will close for today and we will continue tomorrow. Does anyone want to do the Thanksgiving prayer? I'll do it, sister. Yes, sister Jonita, you can do it. Abba Father, we thank you for this beautiful day, the awesome presence of yours filling us, each and every one in our hearts and in our minds, in our thoughts, in our spirit, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for all that you have done for us on that cross, Lord. When you have forgiven us, Lord, it's not, it's, it's not difficult for us to forgive others when what you have done for us, Lord, help us, Lord, to forgive others, even though there are so many things, Lord Jesus, that hold us back and don't allow us to forgive. Father, we pray for each and everyone gathered here this morning and heard your word, Lord. We thank you that we will keep nothing in our hearts and minds when we come before you, you are a holy God, Lord. Let us just keep aside all our shortcomings, our failures, and, and go before you, feeling that you, having that strength and grace that you have forgiven us, and so we have to forgive everyone around us, Lord. In material of whatever we go through, Lord. Father, I thank you for this beautiful session that, through the Holy Spirit, Lord, it's nothing of ours, Lord, nothing of Sister Priya. It was the fire of the Holy Spirit that opened our hearts and minds this morning to reveal what you have revealed, Lord. You th we thank you for her. We bless her. We, we glorify your name, Lord. Your name, which is high above every other name, Lord. Uh, you're, at your name, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We thank you, Lord. Every participant here on this platform, Lord, we pray that you give them whatever their needs are, Lord. Firstly, to know you and to seek you and your kingdom. And everything else will be added unto us. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise that is due to you and you alone. In Jesus' mighty awesome name, I pray. Amen. Beautiful for us, sister. Thank, Thank you, you all for joining in. See you all tomorrow. Bye. Bye-bye. God bless.